Welcome everyone to The Conscious Kitchen. Have you ever come across someone's music on Spotify that just speaks to you from the second you hear the first verse? There are talented creators in this world sharing their light so authentically that it inspires others to shine. Lizzie Jeff is one of those people. From the second I heard her music, I was hooked. A true medicine woman with goddess flow, Lizzie Jeff wants to be your cosmic guide to higher vibrations. A quote from Lizzie reads, the key to life is to be the light. She has a passion for global he healing, sacred activism, and sensual creative expression. She's leading a new type of renaissance dedicated to elevating consciousness through plant medicine, education, social justice awareness, and curated events. Lizzie Jeff is a definition of a multi-hyphenate, dabbling in a little bit of everything and doing it all so eloquently. Today, we're gonna learn more about this powerful MC, writer, healer, and rap priestess. So let's dive in and cook up some conscious conversation. I love that. Hey, what's up, Lizzie? Welcome to the show. Oh, girl. Good. Good. What's up? Ellie yeah, in the house. Yeah, I yeah. I, I'm currently living in Madrid, Spain, but I miss Cali so much. In and Madrid? like Yeah, I'm living in Madrid, Spain, but I'm from Cali and I lived in LA my whole life. So I'm like Oh, very nice. Oh, yeah, it's great. Like your music and like uh, just like all your soulfulness is like it's so West Coast vibe. So mm -hmm. that's amazing. What's Thank up, girl? You. How are you? Welcome. Mm -mm -mm. I'm good. I'm good. I'm great. I'm blessed. I'm thriving. I've been in my creative bag. The doors are opening all around me. Um, Amazing. You know, I'm doing my best to stay hydrated. That's one thing that <laughs> yeah. I've been really working on and just eating really clean and taking care of myself. So I feel good. I feel healthy. Um, I could use um, a spa day this week and another massage, but I'm good. I feel <laughs> great. Thank you for asking. You're from Cali. Are you, where, where did you grow up? In LA. Yep. I'm nice. over off, right off of Crenshaw and Slauson. Amazing. So I was raised more specifically 59th. Um, but I had the opportunity to spend a lot of my childhood in New Orleans as well, which is where my family is from. And so there was a moment in grade school going through high school where I lived in New Orleans and got, you know, inspired and infused by that culture and that energy and really connected uh, deeper with the family roots. Uh, and I've had the opportunity to live in many places, but LA is my home, uh, raised in LA, between LA and New Orleans. And now I'm, you know, I'm on the road now. Amazing. Awesome. And, and so you're talking about your family roots. Is that like, has your family always been to, spirituality and music or or is that your a new path that you formed yourself you know what um my family uh the bloodline like through the generations has most definitely um been tuned into spirituality and music and all of that i believe that that's like the root of um the bloodline the root of our culture is spirituality is the foundation um especially with various uh you know um what, what is the word that i'm looking for there's native american there's jamaican there's some african as well and i think those are three different uh cultures that have many cultures and many spiritual uh belief systems and so there's definitely something that's activated in my DNA. And the way that I express it is simply a reflection of those that paved the path before me, the medicine women in my family, the medicine men, you know, my grandmother, my great grandmother, my mother who passed down um, potions and, and, and infusions and mixtures and, you know, the soul like that comes through from you know, my ancestors and the music that they created because, you know, especially living in this society, um, being black, being African-American, it's a very um, interesting and intense experience that you deal with on a regular basis because people are constantly uh, reminding you that you are not worthy, that, um, you do not belong here. And so the music from my culture has always been 
uh, potent like expression of medicine and healing for the soul. And so I think that I just had the opportunity to tune in deeper and express it in my version, in my vision um, for this renaissance, for this time, so. Yeah, I love how you said renaissance. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, and you can feel that through your music, and it's mm. it's just it's just so it's it's so heartfelt, and there there's just so much that that you give and you share to the world. So I'd love to know, like, what does a day in the life of Lizzie Jeff like look like? What is it? What do you what what is? How does your day start off? You know, that's a good question because every single day something magical, spectacular is happening. I'm always like, damn, my life is a movie. It's a movie, <laughs> and. I love it. I love the life that I have created for myself and for the people around me, for my community. And a day in the life can look like a number of things simply due to the fact that not only am I an artist, you know, a medicine woman, a CEO, entrepreneur, um, I'm a mentor to the community. I am, you know, a poet. I you know, run a record label, Zen and Kush Records. And so there's so many different like faucets to who I am and what I do. And so on any given day, you know, I have my structure, my ritual in the mornings, you know, giving myself the opportunity to, to breathe with intention. to, you know, activate this high level of gratitude because what I realize is the highest act of gratitude is breathing with intention. And so I like to start my day off with gratitude. And from there, I set the tone for my day. I set the intention. I visualize, um, you know, prolific opportunities and powerful moments and just peace of mind and peace of heart and flow. And because of that visualization, I'm able to really set the tone for my day. And that leaves no room for any type of fuckery. I'm just allowed to exist fully in my magic, in my high priestess expression. And so it might be like, for example, Mondays are my administrative days. Usually I have my master class every Monday is called the Divine Assembly is a private mastermind group that I host every Monday. We've been going weekly for the past 10 months. Nice. So I know on Mondays, I'm in a little bit of an administrative flow. I'm not doing too much. I don't really run a lot of errands because I like to prepare uh, for the master class later that evening. When it comes to, you know, Tuesdays, Tuesdays are my radical self-care day. I know I'm getting a massage. I'm taking a bath. I'm treating myself to some super delicious, delectable plant-based meals, mm. you know, different things like that. And different days are reserved for different vibrations. Um, you know, Sunday, that's my day of peace. That's my day of relaxation. I might pamper myself, um, but also I like to plan out my week on Sundays. It helps me maintain structure. So. Any given day when I'm in the streets, when I'm in the community, I might be going to, you know, the local black owned juice spot around the corner. And a nice sea moss infused smoothie, mm -hmm. you know, from Wadada um, when I'm in Atlanta and I'm connecting with the community. There might be some vendors who sell like crystal jewelry or waste beads. So I love supporting the community. I especially love supporting small businesses. So I like to, you know, support them and plant seeds for collaboration. I might then go to the post office and mail out 50 CDs that people ordered to support my music. So I'm shipping them and I'm, I'm packing them in really pretty like purple glittery packaging and I'm sending them out. And, you know, I might go for a walk at Piedmont Park and enjoy the beauty and the nature, but it doesn't matter what I'm doing. I have an overall mindset of prosperity and positivity, even when I'm having rough days, even when I'm having rough seasons, we just were, we, you know, we were in that eclipse and we had the new moon 
Mm-hmm. And it was all in Gemini. So it was a lot of energy popping off left and right. Mm-hmm. Mercury retrograde was booming. So it challenged us to get very clear with our communication and compassionate. Mm-hmm. And so I've been growing, I've been building and um, every day is, is, is magic. You feel me? A day in the life of Lizzie Jeff is fun. Like I have dope friends. We might meet up at the local vegan restaurant and mastermind like our next tour. You know, we might talk about the next Zen and Kush event and what that looks like, mm-hmm. but it's fun and it's, it's, it's infused with community. You know, my, my four main pillars, whether in my, like my social life um, or in my business is um, community, sensuality, you feel me, creativity, and um, spirituality. Those are the four main pillars. And so I do my best to exist in those vibrations. That's my lifestyle. Style is a Drake said once my lifestyle, he said they turned my, um, I forgot what he said. He said something about his lifestyle. Um, his birthday is a lifestyle, you know, and mm-hmm. I feel like every day is my birthday. And so, yeah, that's, that's what it is, you know, but I like to brew my herbs. As a, what is a high priestess? What is the high priestess version of Lizzie Jeff? So that might be Drake myself in silks, cute ass little lace bra. I got my waist beads popping. Yep. You know, it's a vibe. So it's just, it's the vibe for me. Hell yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it sounds like you are very in tune with, with your community and, you know, your process of your daily life. And that's beautiful the way that you describe it. So thank you for sharing that today. Yeah. Um, and I love how mm. one of your pillars is sensuality. And I feel like you're so comfortable in your skin so on social media, through your music. Mm-hmm. Did you always have like a high degree of confidence or, and can you tell us like um, how to come out out of your shell? Like how do you help through your mentoring for, for women or for men? I love that question. Thank you for asking that. Somebody just asked me that yesterday in the master class. I would love for y'all to join one of the classes. Yeah, online. we'd love that. That would yeah, be really that. dope. We could do like something creative and like live, maybe like 30 minutes or something. But the confidence, I was just speaking about this last night, is I had to heal my confidence. That's a song that I'm working on, Heal Your Confidence. And what that meant to me was the way that I was showing up in very sexual settings i wasn't all the way like impressed with myself just to be honest and so i'm like even when i get on stage when i'm when i'm spitting when i'm spitting my truths when i first started i used to like look down because i was nervous or you know i didn't feel all the way confident in myself Mm -hmm. and i recognized that and i said oh hell no i said no 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 lizzie jeff Lizzie Jeff is confident. Lizzie Jeff is a queen. Lizzie Jeff is a high priestess. Everything she touch turn to gold. She is a money magnet. She is powerful. She exudes confidence. When she steps into a building, the energy in the entire space elevates. People feel the aura. She don't even have to say too much. That's the energy that I wanted. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, what does it take for you to get there? And so in that moment, I decided to into that version of myself. I I said, Lizzie in her most confident version, how does she speak to men? How does she speak to other women? You know, how does she show up? How does she express herself? And so I decided to make a commitment to myself every day where I would literally do the work. I would look in the mirror. And when we look in the mirror, sometimes we're like, ooh, our eyebrows, my eyebrows. Oh, why is one, one breast is larger than the other? Yes. Ooh, my teeth. Oh, oh my goodness. I need to, you know, we always say these things about ourselves. Looking at everything so, that's wrong, right? Yes. So with the mirror work, you allow that to those thoughts because that's surface layer thoughts. That's shit that we're constantly being projected. Like that's being projected onto us through social media, billboards, marketing, literally everywhere you go, especially if you're a woman. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I was like, okay, I got some work to do. So doing that mirror work and allowing those surface layer thoughts to roll. I'm like, okay, now I can get into it. Girl, you are beautiful. I love when you wear that pop of red. 
Ooh, look at the way your hair just is so kinky and curly. Mm, 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 the neck bone, the cleavage, you know, that feels better. It sounds better. It's funny, but it's real. And yeah. I would talk to my girlfriends like that. So I want to talk to myself like that. So I made a commitment mm -hmm. to myself to find one new way every single day to fall deeper in love with me. And I've been loving it. And I like to um, drink my water and I like to um, rub myself down in luxurious oils, whether it's mm -hmm. avocado oil or sweet almond oil or jojoba. You know, I like to put that in my bath. It's all about loving myself, healing my confidence. I still have a lot of work to do. And I'm cool with that because, you know, I'm already like who I need to be. And I love being a woman because I'm constantly evolving. And just the journey of womanhood is prolific. And I'm learning new things about myself. My body is changing every day. And I love that. And I want to love her. And so, no, I haven't always had that high level of confidence. And like I said, I still have a lot of work to do. But just like anything, you have a house, you're going to take care of the house because you know the value of the house is appreciating. So when you add like that, that garden and make it pretty, that's adding value to it. When you remodel the stove in the kitchen, when you add a sauna to the upstairs bathroom, you're adding value. And so for me, I want to be a very powerful, beautiful, intelligent, just well-rounded asset rather than a liability. And so for me, who better than me to bet it all on me? So that's yeah. where I stand, where I just pour into myself and I build myself up to become even more valuable because I know what my presence and my art means to the world. I know mm -hmm. what it means to myself. And so I just decided to just really dedicate um, my life to leveling up every single day so that I can show up in a more powerful way for the community and um, for those that come after us. Perfect. I mean, you're so, that it's, there's so many inspiring words and just everything that you said and, and the way you live your life and the words that you share in your music. It's, it's that it's just to inspire everyone to just love themselves. Right. And just really know your worth. And we all tend to forget that it's, it's difficult. It's difficult to navigate this space. And, and you said something about like being a woman. I think it's even like hormonal differences, right? There are some times during the month that you are just like on your moon phase, you are just more confident. And there are other times that you're just not as confident. That's and powerful. So, and so do you, how do you, do you have those moments? And how do you deal with oh, moments absolutely. like that? Oh my goodness, yes. Oh my goodness. There's days where I, um, I'm, I'm feeling myself and I feel like, the baddest thing out there. Nobody's fucking with me. Big Leo energy. Big Leo. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? And there's some days yeah. where I'm just on some, I am not feeling myself right now. Mm -hmm. And um, that's okay. Like, I don't always have to be in my big Leo energy. Like, sometimes I can be in my sensual, soft, like, Taurus, like, you know, sensuality um, frequencies. And just on some low key vibes. But on the days where I might not be feeling myself as much, I take it as a as a invite for my higher self to sit with myself. So I might invite myself to tea. Mm -hmm. I might invite myself to a nice rolled, organic, sun-grown cush with a little bit of rose petals sprinkled in. And I might just kick it and chill and some days when I'm not feeling good, I may go within and say, Lizzie, what's up? What's going on? Why are you triggered? Let's let's figure it out. Let's get to the root of it. And some days, I mean, like, I might be like, fuck it. I'm in my darkness and I'm going to stay here for a little bit and I'm not going to try to figure it out. I'm just going to mm -hmm. go through the, the journey. You feel me? I'm just going to allow myself to be human and to experience what it feels like because all of this is um, medicine and not only that is even more um, energy to fuse into my artistry and so yeah i have those days but i'm working on being more gentle with myself and allowing myself to just feel to just experience the full spectrum of being a spiritual 
human being on this earth. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, totally. I think that's important for women, especially in this generation, to be completely self aware, right? Um, and to also, we ebb and flow so much. It's so, it's, I think it's mm -hmm. also okay to tap into our darkness sometimes, and our darkness can fuel a new chapter in our life or a new journey or a new project, you know? So I think that some of that darkness, sometimes we should al allow it to come in as well. So, you know, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. <laughs> so like, I totally yes. relate with you, girl. Um, <laughs> thank you. So I wanted to talk to you because like, I just from seeing you from, from the outside, like understanding, like seeing your, from your music videos and all the visualization of the art and your mentoring and, you know, your music and everything. So like, it's, it's, you seem like a very successful multi-hyphenate person. Um, and there's so much you have to do, especially especially with the, the record label and all these things. For someone who's trying to do it all, right? Um, have you had any mistakes that you've made personally as a young multi-hyphenate uh, individual? And can you give us some examples um, for other young women to avoid in your own journey? Okay. You know what? I, I like that question. And another thing that I've been working on, me and my tribe, is we refrain from using um, three words, try or trying, um, sorry, and uh, I can't. And so as far as like, shit, I'm doing it all. You feel me? I'm not even trying. I'm doing it. And so with that, with wearing multiple hats, it most definitely comes with its share of learning lessons and just some things just off the jump, you know, what I've realized is something that I wish I knew a little bit earlier in my career is contracts, agreements, written agreements. It doesn't matter, you know, how friendly or sweet or connected you might be with a person. If as soon as you start doing business, always have a contract, always have an agreement, a written agreement where both parties sign. I believe, you know, for me with the label and having the music and various like, uh, like creative expressions, for me it's important to own my intellectual property, especially as a black woman, mm -hmm. um, as a black artist, as a rap artist, being able to own my intellectual property is something that is very important for me. So. Um, just being tuned in, like, don't be afraid to seek legal support. You know, no matter where you are in your journey, there is um, information out there. Just knowing, like, the various templates, understanding what a work for hire template is, um, understanding that, you know, you got to have a written agreement when you do some for or a photographer or something like that. Um, having a team that's something that i learned you know because trying to do it all myself keyword when you're trying to do it all yourself is impossible and so what i realized is i had to pull myself back to get a god's eye perspective to see the business to see all the various elements and then from there i was able to organize and categorize and build um a support system uh that's important you know no matter where you are in your journey once you get clear on your vision give yourself a support system build that and that can look like anything you just got to get creative and uh and one one other thing because there's many but one last thing that i will speak on is business building an empire is not easy building something with the intention to literally shift the paradigm and elevate consciousness in a profound way is not always easy and not everybody is going to believe in your vision and not everybody's going to want to support you and that's something you got to know early on you can't expect your family and you can't expect your close friends to support you you have to get creative and you have to build and also with that said uh we have to establish a spiritual foundation. It doesn't matter how much money, how many opportunities you bring it to the table. None of that matter. It don't even matter how beautiful you are. 
It don't, none of that shit matters. What matters is that you have a spiritual foundation. The foundation is the key to ultimate success and health. So as we're talking about our generational wealth, as we're talking about financial literacy and writing books and starting master classes and all these various things, it's important to give just as much energy that you give to your business, to your health, hmm. staying hydrated, stretching every day, drinking high frequency alkaline juices, kale salads with the avocado and the fresh juicy organic tomatoes, doing all the things, breathing with intention, breathing on purpose. Those are some things that I have learned based on um, decisions that I made that I wasn't necessarily happy with the, end, the outcome. So I had to get clear and I had to assess and figure out how to um, not only acknowledge the lessons learned, but implement new systems to exist so that I can be successful in those areas. Love it. Thank you, babe. Yeah, that's hella important. Spirituality as a foundation, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that people know that, you know, they know that in like the back of their head, but just you saying it today on the podcast is just affirming that that is the foundation to the house, right? You know, you could build a house and be moving the bricks around, but if you don't actually have the foundation, it could fall apart. So right. thank you very much for saying that and affirming that to whoever's listening. And um, yeah, it's powerful. Yeah. And so last last year, I, I want to continue on talking about like business and stuff. Last year, you said in an interview, like maintain integrity and always be yourself. That's like one of your top business advices. Can you tell us about a time where you needed to use your voice to maintain your integrity and um, what the outcome was? Wow. So many times. I yeah. guess the first thing that comes to mind more recently, oh, there's been so many times, but um, there was a situation where I had been invited to participate in a very large campaign, a worldwide campaign, specifically uh, related to the cannabis industry. And when I got there, um, I was presented with a contract to sign before filming, before being a part of this worldwide campaign. And reading the contract, I just didn't feel aligned with it. And I wasn't in a place where I wanted to sign the contract. And so in that moment, you know, I addressed the people who presented it to me and I told them exactly what I just told to you and asked them if, if they would sign something like that, you know, and that I don't necessarily agree uh, with some of the terms. And so in that moment, I, we, basically drafted a new agreement oh. but it's something that's very tiny but potent because oftentimes artists young artists just sign shit without reading it or without understanding it and that's one thing and that's one thing when it comes to accountability and just awareness and just acknowledgement but then there's another thing to be the person on the other end that's giving us this shitty contract. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I'm about integrity. I'm about that human connection. I'm about if we're going to do this, let's do this right. And so in that moment, I decided to speak up for myself because I know that me speaking up for myself is also speaking up for so many other people, especially people that look like me. Mm -hmm. And there was a time where... Um, you know, something similar happened where there was a contract involved and I did the work, but after the work was completed, they decided they didn't want to pay me. So it was a whole thing where I had to take these people to court. And of course the judge ruled in my favor, but I could have easily decided not to take them to court and said, F it, I'll just F it. You know, it's a loss, which is what a lot of artists do. Um, and I decided to step to the challenge and do what I needed to do to speak up for myself and to speak up for my community. And to go back to the first situation, after we drafted a new agreement that all parties felt aligned with and my intellectual property was still 
protected in a sense. I then went on set. And when I went on set, just to be honest, there was about 20 people involved from, you know, the assistants, the DPs, the everything that's involved when it comes to a set for a very large cannabis company. And all 20 people were white. And to me, that was a problem. It's 2021 with all of this stuff that's going on with all of the ways that cannabis was weaponized to obliterate black and brown communities mm -hmm. to where so many white people have these opportunities, these lucrative opportunities and are literally ignoring the elephant in the room. I have a problem with that, especially being a black woman, a black leader in my community who has created a very prolific, uh, tribe and so and brand and movement so i don't have to go outside of my tribe to collaborate with anybody because i've already built and established my own thing that's already prosperous and successful and so for me when i step out to collaborate especially with large cannabis companies i need them to understand the intention of my work i'm not just like this cute black girl smoking weed mm. and some sexy lingerie is deeper than that. I know what it is like. I know what it feels like um, to be, you know, um, targeted in a sense, to see your communities destroyed um, because of the weaponization of cannabis. And so for me, it's my intention to create opportunities for people to be seen, to restore the black family, to restore the community to create uh, resources and jobs, high level executive positions to bring that. If I'm collaborating with a brand, these are the things that I wanna bring back to my community. And not only that, to provide the medicine, we're healing. Imagine having an entire generation of people in your community completely wiped out. That's literally what happened with cannabis based on the laws and the things that were created because of the weaponization of it. Mm -hmm. An entire yeah. community, a generation was wiped out. How do you, how are we supposed to heal if we skip over a generation when we're already getting back from healing our bloodline and our DNA because of the um, systematic oppression of Jim Crow and slavery? Mm -hmm. So I feel like cannabis being the potent medicine that it is, being the mother plant, is up to us to shift the narrative around this medicine. It's up to us to bring this medicine to the people that need it the most, mm -hmm. to the people that require the most healing. And so that's my intention when I'm coll collaborating and connecting. Mm -hmm. And so in that moment, walking on set with 20 white people, specifically for a large cannabis brand, doing a large worldwide campaign, and they didn't have not one black person on set mm -hmm. in, in a position that is not cool. And so in that moment, before we started filming, exactly what I just shared with you, I shared with them. And I reminded them of their power and their privilege and their opportunity to make a difference, to use their voice to make a difference. And so for me, even outside of the commercial that was shot, I felt like my work was done before we even started filming. Mm -hmm. And so imagine, you know, it, it, it's not always easy being the only black person in the space speaking about restoration and social justice. And so, you know, that's something that I stepped into to share, to be real, to be authentic, because what I'm not going to do is get on camera and pretend like things are all good. And I didn't speak my truths because we've been forced to do that for too long to remain silent. And so, yes, I it's an honor. Um, it's a responsibility for me to activate my voice um, to, sh to create shift in consciousness so that we can all show up in a more powerful way for each other. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. That's that's amazing, babe. Yep. Are actually taking the time to voice to voice that and to reiterate everything that's going on in your community and instill that into other people and to teach them something. Because yeah, especially when you're on like a, a crazy shoe with like all these people, things could get really lost, right? Things could just like, okay, let's get this done. We got a short amount of time, everything's mm -hmm. pressed, but it's really beautiful that you paused and you know, you said you said what you have to say. 
at so, that moment. Yeah. yeah. And those, and those, yeah. it's difficult too. It's, it's, it's uncomfortable. You know, it's, you don't know how people are going to take it, but it's something that needs to be done. It's something that needs to be said. So really being the advocate for yourself and for the communities is, is so important. And, and that's, and that's what's so beautiful and magical about you, Lizzie, that, that, that you're doing that work, you know, and, and, but you've mentioned that you felt the impact of mass incarceration since a young age. Could you share like your childhood story of growing up and that experience and how it ties back into like your work, creating community and awareness within the cannabis industry when people can create and use their platform in a conscious way to shift the paradigm that's what i respect i won't respect anything else and when it comes to um my personal history what i'll share is this i'm from l.a i was born in the mid 80s over there south central l.a during a time where people were literally watching their lives shift in front of them because of mass incarceration, because of uh, the war on drugs, the height of the war on drugs. LA was like a vortex of crack, a vortex of police brutality, a vortex of the community being flooded with guns and drugs. And there were men, black men being hauled off, handcuffed by the dozens, being thrown into vans, taken to prison. You know, so many minor charges. I had a friend last night who damn near broke down in tears, one of the most powerful men, um, that I've experienced damn near broke down in tears because listening to this white woman speak about cannabis in a spiritual way really triggered him because his experience was growing up in New York. The number one reason why black men and women were pulled over was because they smell like weed. That's one of the most, the number one reasons why black people are pulled over is because they smell like weed, even if there is no weed in sight. To be harassed, to have their, um, these officers put their hands in their pants and fill up on them and just insult and assault um, the energy, the sacredness, the personal space to, 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 just totally disregard any boundaries. And he was thinking about it and speaking on it and talking about how so many people, so many black men, so many of his friends have gone to jail specifically just for weed. Who got three years, five years, seven years, 10 years life in prison because maybe their third strike was a charge for two grams of some California sun grown and just to feel his pain, just to feel the hurt. You know, it's so many stories, people whose fathers was in jail for 25 years to think about the things that people could have contributed to our society. Even if you go down for three years, three years is a major difference. If you have, you know, a 10 year old daughter, you're 10 before you go in and now your daughter is 13, 14. When you come out, that's a huge difference. And so seeing that and being tuned into that and seeing those weak ass commercials from when I was growing up that would tell me lies about cannabis. You know, there was a whole funded program that would come into my school, into my classroom, stop my class to teach me lies about cannabis and drugs. That was a whole campaign, propaganda, intentional curated like propaganda to mm -hmm. shift my mindset and make me believe lies about this sacred mother plant medicine. And so for me, working as a bud tender for many years, serving the community from vets to pregnant mothers to homeless people to OG grandmothers to soccer moms to business dads to OGs, to Crips, to everybody. What I recognize is one, cannabis is a universal plant that connects all people. It's not just black people that smoke it and why are people being punished? Two, all types of people 
um, seek its medicine. And I watch cannabis literally transform lives every day. And I'm like, this is the opposite of what I was taught. This is the opposite of what we're experiencing in our uh, media. Why is everything so male dominated when it comes to cannabis? When you ask people who are, who are some iconic legends that you think of when it comes to cannabis, oftentimes we hear Snoop Dogg, Bob Marley, Wiz Khalifa, Cheech and Chong, Bob Dylan, um, Louis Armstrong. Sometimes we do hear Billie Holiday, but you hear a lot of these iconic men and shout out to all those men who really created like awareness um, around the medicine. Um, but I would also love to hear a different narrative because right. there's women, it's a feminine plant. The essence of cannabis is so feminine. true. Mm -hmm. Without her birthing the plant, we can't even experience the spiritual medicinal elements. There's women that are topless on a fucking beach smoking cannabis. There's people in in Watts, you feel me, on a porch um, meditating with cannabis because they had a rough week. Maybe they saw the police murder a young black man in front of them and cannabis is the only thing that they have to soothe their soul because the rest of the world is telling us that it's okay and that black lives actually are worthless. And so it means so many different things to so many people. And so for me and where I'm from and what I've seen, I've made it my responsibility to activate my voice and my platform as a means of education, as a means of um, healing, of understanding. And so Zen and Kush was birthed. Zen and Kush was birthed with the intention to create a space for people to learn about cannabis, for people to experience an alternative social setting without alcohol, where we could thrive, we could brew tea and learn about other herbs and all the beautiful herbs that blend with cannabis. We could be on some sexy jazz music, a live exotic dancer. You know, there's things happening and we feel inspired and we feel activated and we feel open and safe and free. And that's what cannabis is. That's what she is. That's what she does. And that's what my intention is in the music, in the events, in my expression, in all the ways that I show up. And I don't just take it for nothing. This is my life. This is the things that I witness, the tragic, the tragedy that I experience and I witness that has ignited that flame. And so that's why I see, you know, white people in the industry that never had shit to do with cannabis, that just want to come and make some money because it's cool and it's trendy. I have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's super. That must be super triggering just to watch it. And and yeah, it's 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 a part. It's like a trend. It's a fad. Like let me hop into it to and see how much money I can make from it. But it's mm -hmm. not. That's not what it's about, you know. But yeah, your work. So, your work is definitely helping that movement. Yeah. I was just going to ask you, I was like, what do you, what kind of legacy do you want to leave behind? But it, you know, everything that you're, you know, that's flowing, you know, out of your consciousness is just touching on all those touch points. So, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. So thank you for your work, babe. Mm -hmm. um, and thank you for sharing those stories from the community. You know, a lot of people don't hear these stories. So that's why our platform with the podcast is to create these conscious conversations you have at home these conversations you have in the kitchen with your family you know these 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 conversations that we need to have for the renaissance of our of the conscious mm -hmm. collective of the human race so and and you know you're definitely a leader in that community um in all aspects of you know your talents and your music and you know through cannabis advocacy advocacy so thank you and also just being you. I mean, really just being authentically like Lizzie Jeff is I think what is is inspiring. And it, it's it's just beautiful to see and we're just so grateful. And honestly, I think we could listen to you talk for like another 10 hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you, I appreciate the love ladies. Yeah, yes. and um, on a lighter note, I wanted to ask you, if you could have it your way, where would you be right now? What would you be doing and with whom, dead or alive? If I had it my way, where would I be right now doing what and with whom? <laughs> um, that's a good question. <laughs> what I've been welcoming in is something very, 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 very gorgeous. 
something so beautiful and tropical, not far from the ocean where the waters are so clean and pure and there's palm trees all around me. And as soon as I put my feet in the sand, I instantly feel like all the negative energy leaving my body while simultaneously being recharged. I'm probably chilling on the beach with three gods, one rubbing my feet with coconut oil, the other like feeding me some really juicy, delicious like watermelon, you feel me? Maybe the third one is just like giving me a scalp massage, maybe just oiling my scalp with some luxurious oils. And there's music, you feel me? There's music and um, it's a vibe. I just wanna be somewhere tropical and warm and it's feeling like Costa Rica. And I'm actually gonna be spending some time there this summer. So I'm really looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to the palm trees, to the breeze. I've been working really hard and, um, you know, efficiently. And I've been very, very, very inspired through it all. And so now I'm like curating this next chapter of my life. And that next chapter is relaxation and peace. And I might look at my phone once every couple of days, if that. Um, and specifically who I would be with, um, I don't know who it is exactly. I don't know who it is exactly, but um, somebody that sees me, somebody that values me. Um, I think it's a lover. I think it's a lover. I think it's somebody that, um, you know, is just respects uh, my work and understands my vision and is there to support the vision and is very affectionate and loving and understands the power of tantric expressions. Somebody that, um, you know, that has a very strong sense of self who knows himself and it may be just him and it may be him and his two brothers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure, but that's something that I'm open to and, um, and, and I'm welcoming in and I feel like it's, it's activated and I'm not worried about it. I'm not in a rush for it, but just to give you a visual of what I've been welcoming in and maybe my cute, my cute house is right there in a private location and you know, it's my dream house, but that's what I'm really, I'm welcoming in just that tropical, low key, easy breezy life. Mm -hmm. Maybe my family's in the crib chilling. My team is there. Everybody has their own space and it's a vibe and I can be free to exist in my divine femininity and my creative expression and just really heal and take the time that I need to level up. So I'm prepared for that next um, like experience that next chapter of my work and my mission and my purpose. Perfect. Beautiful. Well, thank you, boo. Yeah. Um, so what, I mean, we're going to close out the podcast. What, what, how do people find you? What should we be looking forward to from you, um, for the end, the next six months, what's going on? Yeah. So lizzyjeff.com. You can keep up with my events. My album, Prophecies of a Rap Priestess, just recently released. So yeah. it's streaming on all platforms, Tidal, Bandcamp, um, you know, Apple, all the other streaming platforms. And uh, when I'm manifesting for myself, you said six months. Is that what you said over the next six months? Yeah. Um, everything that I just told you as far as like the tropical vibration mm -hmm. yeah. and I'm ready for like, cause I've been on the road for years. So I am ready for a, a, a sanctuary that is mine. Um, and that sanctuary can exist as my home. Even though I may still be traveling, I'm ready for that space. I'm ready to really like, sit down and build a space. It may be Costa Rica. Um, and that home may be also the Zenikush temple. I want to create a Zenikush, like erotic temple of the arts. 
And it's basically, you know, if you've ever been to Zenikush, it's that after dark vibe. It's classy. It's late night. It's exotic dance. It's erotic poetry. It's aphrodisiac infused tonics. It's beautiful topless women rolling your herbs and everything is a vibe. It's respect. It's consent. It's classy. It's elegant. Mm -hmm. and so I see that. Um, my intention is to build a space for that where people can come and experience it every day and not just once every few months mm. when I'm curating the events, but I want it to be a destination space. So it's kind of like a fusion of a gentleman's club infused with a women's club mm -hmm. with that sprinkle of like jazz lounge, but like offered as a private social club. Mm hmm. That's All right, we'll vibe. be there in the next yeah. year. I'm right yeah. there. Book, our, book my flight. 2022 is when I want to open it. Let's awesome. do it. Already 2022 got the book, got the flight already. Costa Rica vibes. I'm down. <laughs> For sure. Lizzie Jeff, LizzieJeff.com, yeah. babe. Lizzie, Hold and me. I want to invite y'all to, I'm hosting the Zen and Kush After Dark Retreat. It's a five yeah. night After Dark Retreat this August, August 6th through August 11th. In celebration of my birthday, as well as the Lionsgate portal on August 8th. So it's going to be a real sexy, like five night after dark retreat in the jungle. Hell oh, yeah. Yeah. So I, like, I would love to uh, send that invite to y'all. Yes, please um, do. But yeah, that yeah, I really amazing. appreciate these great questions. I love the energy of both of you, Elizabeth, like your style is so dope. I just love like the colors that you put together with thank the you. earrings and the top of red <laughs> on the lips. I love it. Oh, thank Laura, you. thank you. Thank Your you. energy is very grounded. And I'm just feeling like the respect and the honor um, that you have is really coming through. And so I appreciate that. I appreciate the genuine energy from you ladies. And um, I look forward to more growth and just seeing what kind of magic we can continue to create together. Yes, yes, Hell yeah, babe. Too. We're we're here to support you in every way. And you guys check out lizziejeff.com, check out her mentoring and please support her music, download it, share with friends and mm -hmm. share this episode with anyone that you feel is gonna get inspired by Lizzie, her story, her advocacy. And yeah, just go ahead and share this podcast with them right now. And babe, we send you all the love and blessings this year. Let's kill it. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks Lizzie. So much, babe. Catch Have you guys everything. next time for the next episode of the Conscious Kitchen Podcast where we cook up conscious conversation. See you guys later. Ciao. Bye.